Welcome to The Daily Show. Hi. Um, I, I'm not exaggerating when I say you might be one of the coolest human beings I've ever spoken to who has also lived one of the hardest lives I, I, I've ever come across. Because, you know, when I started reading this book, I thought it would just be a memoir of your life. And then I realized it was a memoir, really, of your father's life. It was his biography. And then it was also a story of China and the last 100 years. So maybe you can help me understand that. Why? Well, I often being asked why you become you. So when I was in detention in 2011, I asked the same question, why I become an uh, uh, enemy of a state. Mm. So then the, the direct uh, response of the memories, my father was uh, arrested 80 years ago, been put in jail for six years. So we, are, we have been crime um, accused as the same crime, but in very different uh, political government. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, without understanding my father's uh, time and his struggle, and which is about China, about uh, the political situation, the culture, background of China, right. I never really can clearly indicate what I have been through. It really is a, a powerful account of what you've been through. And, you know, in your story, what, what I found fascinating is it appears to me that you have a love for China that is always in your heart, but you do not have that same love for the political system in China or for, you know, how the government treats people. Is, is, is that correct in my assumption of how I read the book? Uh, I think uh, you made a clear, I think, a clear response on what has been, I have been doing. Uh, yes, I'm Chinese, uh, you know, China is, uh, is uh, it matters today, mm -hmm. you know, it's 1.4 billion people. But at the same time, we are under a system which uh, really struggle uh, in every sense, politically and uh, human rights, freedom of speech, in almost every area. Um, Topic right. it really struggles. So, how should I put myself, my my personal life, into this uh, large context? It's uh, it's why I have to write this book to figure it out. Were you never afraid, though, as as somebody who has been detained by the Chinese government? I mean, on multiple occasions, it it appeared that your life would be in danger. You were told so many times not to go up against the government, and yet repeatedly you did. Is, is there no fear in you? Is that what it is? Or I, how, do you, how do you keep on pressing? I do have a fear, but that fear would come from uh, if I don't speak out. Simply, there's no person whose name is Ai Weiwei, and, uh, you know, I will be silent as anybody else. Mm -hmm. So that is not uh, responsible to life itself. We, we always want to speak out our mind. Right. One of your biggest fans, from what I, from what I read in the book, um, is your son. You know, he sounds amazing. One of the passages in the book that's really gripping is where you were detained for the 81 days. You were taken away and you asked him, you say to him, how does it feel knowing, how did he feel knowing that you've been taken away. And he says, it's not a big deal. All the government did was advertise for you and they've made you even cooler. What do you think it is about your son and how he processes what's happening in the world? I try not to touch him that much. You know, I, I don't want to teach him. I don't want to give my lesson to him. Interesting. I think it's not necessary for him to learn what happens to me. But he has this perspective. He said, oh, wait, wait, I, I figured out uh, the one uh, being chasing uh, would make the same kind of effort uh, as someone chasing him mm. because you both are running. So I think there's a beauty in there. He would always think about on both sides, you know, to say why uh, power, power has to uh, see the, the people or the mass the way or why they have to treat them mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm because they are, they are, afraid, are, are afraid of this kind of 
majority. And, and he, he always had this kind of intelligence. So I, I think uh, somehow he just got it. It, it feels like your art has, has, a, has a feeling of resistance to it. You know, when you're shattering a jar, when you're breaking something, it, it, it feels like, is it, is it a rage that, that you're trying to put through? Is it a defiance? What, 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 what is it that's coming across that maybe is different to what you meet when you meet the man? Uh, and well, it's when I talk about my fight or my struggle or even my artworks, it's not really about me, but rather about uh, the value I defend. Mm. I think the value are shared by everybody, uh, mostly for the people who have no chance to speak out and uh, they would uh, live their life in, in dark for generations, you know. They have no way to, to see the justice ever being presented. So that always got me angry. And, uh, but I, still, I, I know, uh, you know, that's just some kind of emotion. I have to control it. Right. Because uh, as an individual, that is uh, that much you can do. But as an artist, you can find uh, a language or vocabulary which can reach out. Uh, sometimes it's successful. Recently, the Holocaust Museum uh, declared the um, treatment of Uyghurs in China as genocide. Many world nations are afraid to say or, or, or try and keep their distance on labeling anything that's happening. But I guess my question has two parts to it. One, do you agree with what is happening to the Uyghurs being referred to as genocide? And two, do you think that helps or hinders the conversation in trying to, to get these people liberated and to get them treated equally? I, I think first, uh, genocide is, uh, is a term Chinese are not very familiar with. They're not only doing to Uyghurs, they are, have been doing that to Tibetans, to Inner Mongolia people. Basically, the communist society has been doing this kind of re-education and the brainwash to anybody, hmm. to my father, to, you know, I grew up with uh, my father in the same location as we were people today. And uh, they clearly tell us that it's a re-education camp. Right. So that only been brought to the world uh, view uh, in recent years, but that that's why they, they don't understand why now being uh, really burned up oh, as an issue. Interesting. But uh, the communists are always doing that and uh, to their own people, to you know, so-called Han people, right. and uh, to other minorities. A thousand years of joys and sorrows. What are some of the joys, and, and maybe tied to that, what are some of your hopes for China going forward? <laughs> the joys will be, I will, always think uh, when there's uh, obstacles, there will be some kind of humor and the joy. And then they all, always offer me this difficult moment. So I have to rethink about my language, my strategy, how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. That is, in most cases, is uh, quite humorous and uh, joyful until they put you in absolute a severe condition like uh, kidnapping or right, right. or under some kind of brutal uh, situation. And uh, for China, I think uh, they are they are developing very fast. No, nobody can ignore China. Right. But uh, at the same time, they are in certain areas. They are quite blind. Mm. First, they still cannot solve the the legitimacy of the power. Mm -hmm. They never let their people, which is 1.4 billion people, to see what a voting ticket is like. Mm -hmm. So that means two things. One, they don't trust those people. And the second, they don't have self-confidence huh. to, 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 to be in power as a legitimate government. So once that is not solved, there will be constantly struggle to clean out any oppositions. And uh, I don't think they can solve that. Huh. And as your son says, 
the person who is chasing is running just as fast as the person they're chasing. That's I the really game. Will. Yeah, that is the game. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. It's, it's so an nice. absolute pleasure meeting you and having you here. Very pleasant to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Don't forget, people, Weiwei's memoir, 1,000 Years of Joys and Sorrows, is available right now.